Hi, I'm Nimi Reichenberg, the CMO at Simplify, and today we're gonna to talk about what do you automate with the security, orchestration, automation, and response platform. So you're considering, or maybe you've even bought, a SOAR platform, and you're asking yourself, well, what do I automate? Well, the first thing I wanna tell you is that you're probably better off not rushing into just blindly automating a bunch of things. Think about your processes first. Make sure you have a good understanding and you've mapped out the different processes your security operations teams needs to follow. After you've mapped out your processes, what we're gonna discuss on this video is what you can actually automate with confidence using a SOAR platform. So let's start with the first stage of most security operations processes, which is the triage stage. This is where you get this large volume of alerts and you, you know, wanna get some information so you can triage them. So the very first thing that companies are automating, and it's really a no-brainer, is enrichment. This is where you reach out to your various tools to understand uh, you know, what else do I know about the various entities that are, um, are part of this alert. So things like going to act out to Active Directory, getting information about a user, or going out to your endpoint solution and getting information about a specific endpoint. The next thing that you'd like to automate is threat intelligence gathering. If you take one of the common use cases of SOAR, which is you know, a suspected phishing email, you can definitely automate with confidence the process of reaching out to your threat intelligence solution of choice and finding out what does threat intelligence know about a specific URL or a specific sender? Is it something that's known bad? Is it something that is actively exploited currently? Or is it, you know, as far as threat intelligence is, uh, is concerned, something that's completely benign? The next thing you can automate is the process of user interaction. These are all the times that we actually want to reach out to our user and ask a question and get a, um, a response and you know, continue the process based on the response. A common example would be if you get an alert about a user that tried to um, you know, log into their machine multiple times with the wrong password. You can automate the process of sending an email or a text message to that user, asking them, hey, did you just try to log into your machine multiple times? If you get a positive response, you can ignore the alert. If you get a negative response, or maybe you don't get a response, you can start escalating that alert and doing some deeper investigation. And the last thing that we can talk about in the triage phase is just different types of analysis on, on malware, for example. A common thing that we see automated is, for example, if there is a, a phishing email that's suspicious, you can actually take the attachment, automatically send it to a sandboxing solution, detonate it, get the result back, and again, based on what the result is, continue the process. Now let's move to the next part of the process, which is typically taking that initial decision, understanding if an alert can be closed or does it need to be investigated further or maybe even escalated. A lot of the trivial decisions in the decision-making step can be automated with a SOAR platform. For example, if I receive a suspected phishing email, I run it across multiple threat intelligence sources and they all say it's benign, I can automate the process of closing that alert as a false positive. This way I'm ensuring that my analysts are only dealing with cases or alerts that are not kind of trivial false positive. This kind of automation can save your security operations team a lot of precious time. The next step of the process usually involves some sort of investigation. So I've determined that a specific case or alert um, warrants additional investigation. And there are a lot of things that you can automate with a SOAR platform to take a lot of the grunt work away from this stage in the process. For example, if you need to run additional queries against your SIM to understand, hey, have I seen this um, variant of a specific malware on any other machine? You can run those queries on your SIM or your EDR. Uh, another example is you can get more context around what a specific user did or a specific machine did. Uh, a common example is, hey, I want to um, collect every website that this you know, machine visited in the last 12 hours and examine that. So these are things that can easily be um, 
coded as parts of a playbook and can be automated so that again you can focus your time actually analyzing the data rather than collecting it when you're conducting investigations. Now let's talk about what you can automate around response. So the first thing I'd like to point out is that most companies today still would like an intelligent human analyst to analyze the data before he or she decides to trigger uh, you know, a sequence of response activities. But once that analyst determined that response is required, you can actually automate a lot of those steps at a click of a button. I'll give some examples. For example, if an analyst you know, looked at the data and determined that um, a user has actually been fished and, and clicked on a, on a bad email, you can, at a click of a button, trigger a series of response actions. Things like, hey, let's block this URL on, the, on my firewall from now on. Or if somebody downloaded a malicious attachment, let's block this executable on all my machines from, from this point on. And you can even do things like, hey, let's automate the process of opening a ticket for the IT department to re-image this machine. So the decision to initiate response action is typically not fully automated these days, but the actions themselves, many of them, can be automated using a playbook in a SOAR platform. And the last thing uh, that I want to talk about automating is what I call kind of the lessons learned or closing the loop, which is something that very few security operations teams have time for today because so much time is spent on the daily firefighting. So a SOAR platform um, not only automates a lot of the activity to free up time, but it can also automate some of that closed loop feedback. For example, if something um, was determined as malicious, a playbook may be able to loop back into your threat intelligence solution and flag that as something that was actually determined bad by human analysts. Uh, another thing that you can do is, again, go back and tweak processes based on what actually worked and what, what uh, didn't work. So there's a lot of things that you have to think about once a process is actually completed around how do I drive continuous improvement, how do I look at the data, and how I can automate some of these things um, to make sure that I improve based on what I'm actually seeing. So in summary, SOAR platforms are really cool technology that allows you to automate a lot of the repetitive mundane tasks that security operations teams do day in and day out. One thing to keep in mind, make sure you understand your processes first, then as you get more comfortable, automate as many of those steps as you can so that your analysts are focusing on high value work and SOAR becomes that true force multiplier for your team that lets you handle more alerts, you know, reduce response times and dwell times and ultimately keep your organization safer.